Welcome to a review lesson on operations with fractions. We'll begin by reviewing the addition and subtraction of fractions. The main thing to remember when adding or subtracting fractions is we must obtain a common denominator. So looking at our first example, we have one-half plus one-third. Let's take a look at this model below before we follow the steps outlined here to find our sum. Notice here's a model for the fraction one-half and here's a model for the fraction one-third. To find this sum, or combine these two fractions, it's important that we combine pieces that are the same size. So notice how if we change the model for one-half into three-sixths, and we change the model for one-third to two-sixths, we now have pieces that are the same size, and you can see we have a total of five pieces, where each piece is one-sixth. And therefore, the sum of one-half and one-third, or three-sixths and two-sixths, is equal to five six. So by determining a common denominator, we're adding pieces of the same size. So now following our steps above, notice how the first step is to rewrite mixed numbers and whole numbers as improper fractions, which doesn't apply here because both fractions are proper fractions. Step two, we find a common denominator, which is a least common multiple of two and three, which would be six. Step three, we write the fractions as equivalent fractions with the common denominator. So for the fraction one-half, to write this with a common denominator of six, we notice how we multiply the numerator and denominator by three, plus for one-third, we'd multiply the numerator and denominator by two. Notice how this would give us the sum three-six plus two-six, and now that we have a common denominator, we add or subtract the numerators, and the denominator stays the same. So three six plus two six, as we already know, is equal to five six. We always want to make sure that our answer is simplified, but five six does not simplify. Next we have eleven fifteenths minus five twelfths. Again, we don't have any mixed numbers or whole numbers, so step two we want to find a common denominator hopefully the least common denominator, the least common multiple of 12 and 15 is 60. Now step three, we write the fractions as equivalent fractions with our least common denominator. So for 11 fifteenths, we'll multiply both the numerator and denominator by four, since 15 times four equals 60. And then for 5 twelfths, we'll multiply both the numerator and denominator by five, since 12 times five is equal to 60. So this would give us 44 sixtieths minus 25 sixtieths. And now we subtract our numerators. 44 minus 25 is equal to 19. And our denominator stays 60. And there are no common factors other than one between 19 and 60, and therefore this difference is in simplest form. Now I do want to make a point here that there's always less simplifying if we can find the least common denominator, but any common denominator would work. For example, if we could not find the least common multiple of 15 and 12, we could just use 15 times 12, or 180, as a common denominator. So I'd also like to show that. So we could write 11 fifteenths with the denominator of 180 by multiplying by 12 over 12, and we could write 5 twelfths with the denominator of 180 by multiplying by 15 over 15. So the first fraction would be 132 over 180, and then we'd have minus 75 over 180, and 132 minus 75 is equal to 57, and there's a common factor of three here, so this does simplify to 19 sixtieths. And of course, we can always check these on the graphing calculator. Let's go and check the second example. We can enter 11 fifteenths minus five twelfths. Enter. This gives us a decimal approximation. To get the fraction value, we press math, enter, enter, which does verify our difference is correct. Notice in example C, we have mixed numbers. So step one will convert the mixed numbers to improper fractions. So for four and three-fifths, we'd have a denominator of five, and the numerator is going to be five times four plus three, which is 23. 
and then we have minus for one and five, six, we'd have a denominator of six, and the numerator is going to be six times one plus five, which is equal to 11. And now we want to find a common denominator, hopefully the least common denominator, which would be the least common multiple of five and six, which is 30. So we're going to write equivalent fractions with denominators of 30. So for 23 fifths, we'll multiply by six over six, and for 11 six, we'll multiply by five over five. So 23 times six is equal to 138, and 11 times five is equal to 55. So our denominator stays 30, and the numerator is going to be 138 minus 55, which is equal to 83. So while this is our difference, and it is simplified, let's also write it as a mixed number. So to convert to a mixed number, we'd have 83 divided by 30. There are two 30s in 83, two times 30 is 60. And notice here we have a remainder of 23. So we can also express our difference as two and 23 thirtieths. And then for D, we'll write two as an improper fraction, so that'd be two over one minus eight fifths. Notice here our common denominator is going to be five, so we'll multiply two over one by five over five. So this would give us ten fifths minus eight fifths. Denominator stays five, and the numerator is going to be ten minus eight, which is equal to two. And again, two fifths does not simplify. Now let's move along to multiplication and division of fractions. Before we follow our steps above though, let's look at example A and solve it using this model here. Two thirds times three fourths means you want two thirds of three fourths or two thirds of a copy of three fourths. Notice how here's a model for three fourths. We want two thirds of this. So let's divide this into thirds horizontally in this direction. So notice that two-thirds of three-fourths would be this amount here. So notice how two-thirds of three-fourths is equal to six-twelfths. But this does simplify, there's a common factor of six here. Six-twelfths simplifies to one-half. But now let's find this product using the steps above. Step one again is to write mixed numbers and whole numbers as improper fractions, which doesn't apply here. So following these steps directly, if we have two-thirds times three-fourths, our directions say we multiply straight across, meaning multiply the numerators, then multiply the denominators, and then step three is to simplify. So two times three is equal to six, and three times four is equal to twelve, and we know six-twelve simplifies to one-half. So while these steps always work, typically it is common to simplify before multiplying. So let's back up and do this again. To simplify before multiplying, we simplify out any common factors between any numerator and any denominator. Notice here we have a common factor of three. There's one three and three here, and one three and three here. So these both simplify to one, and notice two and four share a common factor of two. There's one two and two, and two twos and four. And now we can multiply and our product will already be simplified. So one times one is equal to one, and one times two is equal to two. Looking at the next example, notice how we don't have any mixed numbers or whole numbers, so we could just multiply the numerators and denominators and then simplify, but again, let's simplify first. Notice how 12 and 48 have a common factor of 12, where there's one 12 and 12, and four 12s and 48, and notice 25 and 35 share a common factor of five, where there's five fives in 25 and seven fives in 35. Now we can go ahead and multiply and our product will already be simplified. So the numerator is going to be one times seven or seven and the denominator is going to be five times four which is equal to 20. Seven twentieths does not simplify because the only common factor between seven and 20 is equal to one. Next we have seven eighths times five which we'll write as seven eighths times five over one. 
there are no common factors between any numerator and any denominator, so we multiply the numerators and multiply the denominators. So seven times five is equal to thirty-five, and eight times one is equal to eight. Notice here we do have an improper fraction. Let's also find this product as a mixed number. So we'd have thirty-five divided by eight, and there are four eighths in thirty-five. Four times eight is equal to thirty-two. We subtract, and notice how we have a remainder of three, which means thirty-five eighths is equal to four and three eighths. Again, we have the quotient, and then we have the remainder over the divisor, which is also the original denominator. And then finally for D, we first we write the mixed numbers as improper fractions. So for three and one fifth, we'd have a denominator of five. The numerator is going to be five times three plus one, that's sixteen. And then for one and one ninth, we have a denominator of nine, and the numerator is nine times one plus one, which equals ten. Now again, before multiplying, let's go ahead and simplify. Notice five and ten share a common factor of five. There's one five and five and two fives and ten. And there are no common factors between sixteen and nine. So now we'll multiply the numerators and multiply the denominators. Sixteen times two equals thirty-two. And one times nine equals nine. Again, this fraction does not simplify, but it is an improper fraction. Let's also find the product as a mixed number. So we'd have thirty-two divided by nine. There are three nines in thirty-two. Three times nine equals twenty-seven. We subtract, and we have a remainder of five, which means thirty-two ninths is equal to three and five ninths. And now let's look at two examples of dividing fractions. Again, step one is to write the mixed numbers and whole numbers as improper fractions, which doesn't apply in our first example. Now step two, it says change the second fraction to its reciprocal, and then three we multiply. So instead of dividing by three-fifths, we're going to multiply by the reciprocal of five-thirds. So one-half divided by three-fifths is equivalent to one-half times the reciprocal of five-thirds. And now we follow the rules for multiplying. Notice we have no common factors between the numerators and denominators, so we multiply the numerators and multiply the denominators. One times five equals five, and two times six is equal to six. The division problem, one half divided by three fifths, is asking us how many three fifths are there in one half. And because our quotient is five six, there are five six three fifths in one half. Next we have eight divided by four fifths. We'll first write eight as an improper fraction, which would be eight over one. And then instead of dividing by four fifths, we'll multiply by the reciprocal. So we'll multiply by the reciprocal of four fifths is five fourths. So we'll have times five fourths. And notice here before multiplying though, we can simplify eight and four share a common factor of four. There's one four and four and two fours and eight. And now we multiply, two times five equals ten, and one times one is equal to one, and ten ones, or ten divided by one, is equal to ten. So the quotient eight divided by four-fifths is asking how many four-fifths there are in eight, and we found there are ten four-fifths in eight. Before we go, let's look at one more example. We want to simplify the expression containing fractions using the order of operations. Notice how we have addition and multiplication, and following the order of operations below, notice how we multiply before we add, which means we'll find this product first, but notice how before multiplying we can simplify. Here we have a common factor of two. There's one, two, and two, and one, two, and two. So when we find this product, we'd have one half plus our product is going to be three times one, which is three, over one times five, which is five. And now before we find our sum, though, we must obtain a common denominator. The least common denominator would be the least common multiple of two and five, which is ten. So we'll go ahead and rewrite one half with the denominator of ten by multiplying by five over five. 
and we'll rewrite three-fifths with the denominator of ten by multiplying by two over two. So we have five-tenths plus six-tenths, which would be equal to eleven-tenths, which does not simplify, but it is an improper fraction. Let's also convert it to a mixed number, eleven divided by ten, there's one, ten, and eleven. We subtract, we have a remainder of one. So we can also express eleven-tenths as one and one-tenth. Okay, I hope you found this helpful.